welcome to Faith to Believe. It's good to be back with you today. I'm so happy that you've tuned in to the broadcast. Once again, I'm Carolyn Hunt, your host, and as the guest today, uh, well, you're no longer a guest because you're always on with me. <laughs> My husband, Danny Hunt, is here with me today, so I am so glad to have you on the set once again. And I think God has given us something great to talk about. But before we do that, I do want to tell you about all the great things that are taking place right there at the Walk in the Word Church on 1201 Stubbs Avenue. Every Sunday morning, the power of God is moving in that place. And let me tell you something. The Word of God is going forth. People are being healed and set free. We're getting so many testimonies that are coming forward about how the Word of God is blessing their life. You know, the name of our church is Walk in the Word. So we do believe in teaching the Word of God, the uncompromised Word. Word, and then actually teaching people how to apply the Word of God to their lives. There's a ministry there for everybody. Don't care who you are, whether you're the youngest all the way to the oldest, there is ministry there for you. And I'm so happy about that. You know, Danny, we've got our children's ministry, and the children are so excited about what takes place in children's ministry. Every Sunday morning, they get the opportunity to come to church, have their breakfast, then go to their classroom, and enjoy the Word of God on their level. And when they get to their class they don't just listen to a teacher standing there talking to them they have their own little bibles and they get an opportunity to sing and they also get an opportunity to participate in whatever the teacher has planned for them for that day so once again if you're, you have children then walk in the word church is a place for you because we love children there and then we have that young adult ministry that is on fire for god you know ever since we went to, you know to, we carried a, them on a trip this summer uh -huh. to uh atlanta and they came back on fire for God, implementing some of those things. And we have a young adult praise team every third Sunday. Every third and Sunday. And fifth Sunday, you can hear the young adults singing and lifting up the name of Jesus. But then you see them all around the church on the ushering and greeting and, and at the front door and, and just uh, being a part of what God is doing. And I love that because we're an all-inclusive church to where from the youngest, you know, from the time they get up a little bit, you know, we began to allow them to do something in the yeah. kingdom of God to help work out their own salvation. And we're excited about that. And then the elderly. The elderly get an opportunity to come and mm -hmm. fellowship and do some things as well. And so Walk in the Word Church is a place for everyone. And we want to invite you to come and be a part of what's taking place. Just come and visit with us. If you don't have a church home, just come and visit with us. And, and get, let Danny and I know that you're there so that we can say hello to you and to welcome you because we are a friendly church. You know, sometimes you can go to church and you don't find that it's a friendly church <laughs> but we are a friendly church and a church full of Absolutely. love Amen. and a church that's excited yeah. about having you there because we know that you could choose to go somewhere else so we we were just happy when you come to be with us right there at the walk in the word church that's 1201 Stubbs avenue every sunday morning at 10 30 and then again on tuesday nights you know so many times people say well i have to go somewhere else on sundays but they come out and they visit with us or be with us on tuesday nights because tuesday nights are just like sunday the word of god is going forth the praise team sings and the word of God goes forth and so everything that takes place on Sunday takes place on Tuesday nights as well our children get the opportunity to go to their children's church on Tuesday nights and once again they receive the word of God on their level so we want to make sure that you know what is happening at walk in the word church and we're looking for you come and let Danny and I know that you're there and we'll be happy to hug on you and let you know that we, we, we're just excited about it. And uh, once again, that's every Sunday morning at 1030 and again on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. Yeah, we'd love to have you come be a part of one of our services. Everything from pediatrics to geriatrics, there's a place there just for you. So just yeah. come in, sit down, and relax, and enjoy the Word of God. And then find, uh, find your place. Uh, yeah. we're, we're consistently growing. We're expanding. Uh, we're adding more ministries. But every ministry still needs some more people just like you to come in and help us. Yes. Like I said, from pediatrics, we got a nursery department, all the way to geriatrics, which is probably where I'm about to be or whatever you want to call that. But nevertheless, you come, enjoy the presence of God, the power of God, and above all, get the Word of God. So we're looking for you. Amen. Looking for you now, like Jesus is playing Satan. Looking for you. Come on down. Amen. All right. Well, we have a great topic today for you. And that topic is, you know, I wrote a book a couple of years ago. God gave me the privilege to write Issues of the Heart. 
And we're going to be talking about that today, protecting your heart for abundant living, issues of the heart. Do you know, I, I, was, I didn't know that there are so many things that happens in our life is because of what's happening in our, in our hearts. And mm -hmm. once I began to write this book, I went back and I started reading it. I picked it up this morning. And I started reading it, and it was like all fresh revelation and information to me <laughs> all over to again. Yes, it came back to me. So the scripture that we're going to be talking about today, and if you've got your Bible, get your Coke, your coffee, or whatever, and come on, study with us today as we go into the Word of God. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 4 and 23, King Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, wrote this, and he said, Keep thy heart with all diligence. In some translation it says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. King Solomon said to us that we are to keep our heart with all diligence. And you know, God wants us to put a guard around our hearts so that we don't allow just anything to come into our hearts, Danny. Absolutely. Uh, it's always been an amazing thing to me that when God talked about the heart, he talks about to the place where he will actually come and live. For the, the heart is who you are. That's where your consciousness really is. Uh, Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so we talk about the heart. We've got to talk about renewing of the mind. We've got to talk about the mindset where your, where your mind, your will, your emotions uh, reside. And reflected from this viewpoint, it's what allows your heart to be controlled and to be connected to become what it is. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so today we're going to talk to you about your thought process and the process of how you guard your heart. That is the interest to your heart. That's going to be through your eyes, through your ears, through your intellect. And so what you allow to come in is going to affect and control how your heart is. And how you guard that and what you allow to come in would dictate what's going to come out. Because why? That will control your thought process. So I think we're going to do a great job today. Yes, yes it will. You know, when I, when I look back at the book, as I said to you earlier, and if you'd like to get a copy of this book, just contact me right there at Walk in the Word Church, and you can get a copy of this book because I'm going to be talking a little bit from it. And one, thing, one of the things that I said in this book is, Seeds will produce. For whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap, which we know is in Galatians 6 and 7. And when we look at what comes in, it's what is produced. It's the conception of fruit. What's conceived in the heart of a man will bring forth fruit in his life. Because every seed reproduces after its kind, both spiritually and naturally. So if you sow into your spirit man, into your heart, negative things, then you're going to get negative things out because it will produce directly after its own kind. Whatever the seed is, that's what it produces. An animal births another animal, like itself. People beget people. In other words, we don't have animals. If we, no. if we conceive, we conceive other people. Uh -huh. So an apple seed will bring forth an apple seed. An orange seed will bring forth an orange seed. So whatever comes in is what's going to come out. And what we're allowed to come in is what we will live out of. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that makes, makes reference to the physical type of seed. But in the kingdom of God, we deal with these spiritual seeds. And the spiritual seed is meaning an act or a deed of, of kindness. If you plant kindness, then you're going to get kindness back. If you plant malice, you're going to get malice back. The Bible says, be ye not deceived, for God is not mocked. So therefore, you cannot plant seeds of unrighteousness and expect to get a crop or a, a harvest of righteousness. And so in the process we're talking about today is how we guard our hearts. Is we selectively choose what seeds we allow to be put into our hearing, into our body, into our nature, into our very selves. So therefore, if, if, if I'm watching pornography, I'm allowing something bad to come into my spirit. Yes. And it's going to produce negative results in my life. 
if I want to be a good husband, then I can't go out and hang out at the bar and hang out with the boys and, and, and chase uh, other females. So I've got to respond to seeds of righteousness, kindness, meekness, gentleness, to produce this guard around my heart. You know, we, we, we love to be offenses. And offense is designed to do two things. It's to keep the things we want in, in, and the things we want out, on the outside. Right. So therefore, if I want to keep controversy and problems out of my marriage, then I got to build a fence up where I'm doing the right thing that's going to allow good things to come into my heart. I got to respect my wife. I've got to love my wife. I've got to cherish my wife. I've got to treat my wife as God expects me to. Not the way my bud or my homeboy or somebody says I should do it because their uh, definition of treating a wife right may not be the same one that God has for me in my life. So in it's, other words, you're saying whatever you allow to come in is what you will live out of. And if you want to live out, if you want to have fruit in that area of your life, then you've got to guard what it is that you want to have be fruitful. Because your heart is the soil of your life, and it produces fruit from the seeds that go into it. If you have good more soil, all you have to add is the right seed, and you'll get a good crop. I'm reading directly from this book. From so book. protect your heart by planting seeds of righteousness in it. If seeds of righteousness are planted in your heart, you will receive a harvest of the fruit of righteousness. So whatever you plant in huh. to your heart or allow to come in, that seed will produce. In other words, what you plant will grow. So we have to make sure that we are planting the right seeds into our heart. Hey, that, that, that almost sounded like I was reading your book. It did. It did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you are planting the right things in there. But there are things that are taking place now in the world that if we're not aware of it, it knows how to ease its way into our life. And then all of a sudden you see that crop coming up and you ask the question, how did that get there? How did I allow that seed to come up into my life? And so that's why the, uh, King Solomon said to us, when I read that scripture a few minutes ago, not only did he say, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, what you live out of. He said, but put away from thee a forward mouth, a perverse lips puts far from thee. But he says, let your eyes look right on and let your eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. He said, don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left, don't turn, turn away from those things that you know are the right things. So what King Solomon is saying to us is that we have to guard our eyes, we have to guard our ears, what comes into our ears, because once it gets in, and the enemy can send in things through subliminal messages, that means something that you think is so har uh, that's, uh, that's not harmful, but yet once it goes in, it takes a root. And then next, you began to live out of that, and you wonder, how did I get this seed in my life? And it's because you didn't guard or you didn't keep your heart with all diligence. Wow. You know, one thing that uh, 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 comes to my mind and I think about is how we let this happen is we compromise. That is, we'll have a set of values that we want to live out of, but sometimes we'll allow ourselves to come in contact with some friends or neighbors or, or whatever that don't really have the exact same value set that we do. And because we're interacting with them, we'll lower our standards so we'll fit in to what they yes. want to do. Uh, what do you mean? Okay, uh, perhaps you used to be a person who likes to consume alcohol in excess. But through going to church and being delivered and God helping you, you quit doing that. But now you've got some friends that never quite made that decision to change, so they still want to go out and party on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, throughout the week. And if you continue to hang out with them or to begin to hang out with them again, then those same values that they have will try to creep back into your life. And this way, here's the liquor, it's free. Here's the cigarettes, it's free. Here's the narcotics, it's free. So we have to learn to not compromise when we make a decision to stand for righteousness and do what we know is right. And I'm not saying that's easy because I know as well as you do that it's not. We deal with temptation. We have an adversary. The Bible says who goes around seeking whom he may devour. And he's consistently trying to find a crack, a crevice, or a weak spot in our lives to devour that which God has already blessed us with. 
Amen. You know, I talked about in the book about how you can have a spiritual heart disease. What do I mean by that? That sometimes some Christians are suffering from heart disease. And I'm not talking about a physical heart disease, but a spiritual heart disease. Why? Because they have allowed the things of the world to infect their hearts. The sad thing is that many of them don't realize that their hearts are infected. Wow. And that's what you're saying. They got their hearts infected by the things of the world. God says that we're not of the world, even though we're in the world, and that we are to separate ourselves from the things of the world. And I wrote in here about the only sign they have of the problem is death because James tells us that once the seed is conceived into our hearts, then it brings about death, spiritual death, not natural death. I'm talking about spiritual death within that area. It's just as you said, at first you were doing great. You were uh, going to church. You were serving God. You were loving. You were kind. You were speaking right words. All of a sudden, You've got, you got, you began to hang out with the wrong people, go out with the wrong persons, or allow something that you were reading or something that you was watching on television to infect your heart. You got, let that door open and it came in and it brought spiritual death to you in those areas. That's why Paul said, guard your heart for out of it are the issues of life. Your heart is kept in a healthy condition when it is filled with the word of God and the will of God. And, and when you're studying the word of God, when you're staying with Christian around and with Christian people that are trying to live the word right, then your heart can be kept in a healthy condition. And when your heart is healthy, you'll live out of that healthy heart. And that will be the kind of life that you will produce. That will be kind of kind of fruit that will come forth in your life. Wow, that's interesting. If you compare uh, your, your heart, a physical nature heart, as well as a spiritual nature heart, then you can take some of the same terminology that our, that our medical profession gives to us. And we talk about a hardening of the arteries, which is bad for your heart. Well, if you take that on the spiritual side, that means you have a cold indifference to the needs of other people. In other words, your compassion level is not where it used to be. When tragedy comes, you don't feel the same hurt and pain that you used to. And we talk about things, the Bible talks about having a, 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 a heart murmur uh, in, in the natural. Well, in the spiritual, it would be the same thing as somebody who complains all the time. A person who complains all the time, they don't really attract good friends because nobody wants to hear you complaining all the time. The Bible says to build yourself up on your most holy faith. Speak forth the word of God in other people's hearing that you also may hear it. Yes. In other words, I find myself that if, if I begin to talk about something that's depressing, I get more depressed. Amen. But if I want to lift myself up, I talk about the word of God. You know, yes. thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So therefore today I shall walk in the word of God. And if you begin to, 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 to learn to do these things, uh, that brings about a renewing of the mind, yes. a change of the emotions, which brings about a change of, of the will, that, what you want to do. And as you begin, as you begin to more do better, then, then you want that. And so I think this guarding your heart, is a good subject. Uh, well, I'll, and you know what else, uh, Danny, is very hard to do because we have so many things that are going on in the world. You know, on the television, we have so much on the television. We have many channels. Some people have 40 to 50 channels that they can choose from to choose what the wife. Okay, hundreds. Well, see, I don't know because I only watch like around five or six. <laughs> you yes. know, I watch a couple of, you know, gospel channels. And then uh, what's my favorite? HGTV yeah. and, and the, all the game shows and things like that. So I don't get Hallmark channels because I'm always watchful, guarding my heart about things that come into my yeah. heart. Because if you allow those things to come into your heart, then your heart will begin to malfunction. What do I mean by that? I don't mean malfunction from the physical perspective. Well, I'm speaking spiritually began to malfunction because diseased hearts are the reason that the world is in such turmoil. We wow. fight one another because our hearts are overflowing with selfishness instead of love. We talk about one another because our hearts are overflowing with jealousy and envy instead of love. We're impatient because our hearts are filled with not being patient and, and, and not the fruit of the spirit like it should. So all of these things we have allowed to come into our hearts that have caused uh, uh, us to that seed to produce. And when that seed produce, then that's what's that. I mean, that's what you begin to live. out. remember the scripture says, guard their heart because with all diligence, because out of it are the issues of heart. In other words, what comes in 
It's what's coming out. Apostle Paul reminds us about this consistently when he talks about the virtue of love. When he talks about when we have love in our heart, then love will come out. We'll receive those kind words. We'll receive gentleness when we've got love on the inside of our hearts. We've got love in our heart. Vision, we plant love seeds. We'll get compassion for other people. We won't talk about people when they're down and they're out. Why? Because we've got love seeds planted on the inside of us. There are also seeds of bitterness. Oh, let me tell you. Seeds of bitterness will tear families away apart. Seeds of bitterness will cause people to leave your church. Seeds of bitterness will cause people to lie on you. Seeds of bitterness. What do I mean? Person get angry. They get bitter. And then they sow seeds. They allow that seed to grow. That's and then spirit. when that seed grow, yes, then they begin to live out of that bitterness. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I want to talk about that for just a few minutes because seeds of bitterness is one of the major causes of heart disease. The reason why our, our <laughs> hearts are not functioning the way that they need to. I'm talking about the spiritual heart now, okay? okay? It manifests itself into ill will and deteriorates the heart. Seeds of bitterness are sown into our hearts when there's unresolved anger and unforgiveness. Bishop, wow. I just dealt with that. Unresolved anger and bitterness. And when I talked to the person, I sat there and all I could see was these seeds of bitterness just pouring out of their mouth, pouring out of their attitudes, pouring out of their behavior. Why? Because they're allowed that seed of unforgiveness and that seed of bitterness to rest inside of their hearts, and then now they're living out of it. They're well, living what, out of that. And what goes beyond that? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go back to, to compromise again. Sometimes we'll have a person that has a seed of bitterness because of something that happened to them. And because they respond to that, that out of that bitterness, it now infects those closest to them. In other words, they'll team up with the person who's bitter against somebody else when the mm -hmm. third party had nothing to do with the other person. Case, yes. case in point, A gets mad at C. Mm -hmm. B is just sitting in the middle not doing anything. But since A gets mad at C, B says, well, I'm going to be mad at C too. Why? <laughs> well, I'll be mad at C because you're mad at C. But what does C do? Nothing. And so, but, but because you're so mad, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you in your quest to yes. get even with them. Yes. And, 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 you know, kind of pardon me for this, but we have a country that's kind of going in that direction. We have people getting mad because other people are mad. We have people who are, who, are, who are complaining because other folks are complaining. You didn't really think that way or feel that way until somebody told you that you should think or feel that way. And we need, we need to replace that back with the Word of God. we got to learn how to forgive one another. You know, we, we ask God for... Those are seeds. For, those are seeds. Seeds of unforgiveness. Seeds of unforgiveness. Seeds of bitterness. Seeds of anger. The Word of God says that anger rests in the bosom of a fool. Amen. A I didn't call you a fool. I'm just telling you what person. the Bible says. That, yeah. that anger will rest in the bosom of a fool. And when it rests, it's resting in your heart. That seed is planted there. And when it's opportune time, that seed is coming up. King Solomon said, guard your heart, for out of it, out of your heart, are the issues of life. In other words, he's saying that's what you will live out of because that's what you have planted and that seed grow. And if you don't pray and allow God to dig up the root, mm -hmm. not just pull it up, but dig up the roots, yeah. Of bitterness out. and anger and unforgiveness and meanness out of your heart, then you'll live out of that. And then you'll wonder why things don't ever go well with you and why it looks like things are always coming against you and why you're how, not happy. right, why you're not happy and why you don't have any peace and all of that. And that is because you fail to dig up the root. We have to pray and ask God, God, search our heart. And if there be anything in our heart that is unpleasing to you, I give you permission to dig it out, to take it out, so that we will live out of the right seeds. We will grow mm -hmm. right seeds in our life. You know, we've got to get the right knowledge and the right information about what comes in. Every, all information is not inf good information that we allow to come into our hearts. And we have to make sure that we're getting good information. Today we are talking about, if you just tune in, Issues of the Heart. God allowed me to write this book, Issues of the Heart, Protecting Your Heart, 
for Abundant Living. And if you want to get a copy of this book, just contact me right there at the Walk in the Word Church, 1201 Stubbs Avenue, or give me a call at 348 5922 and we'll make sure that you get a copy of this book. This book has blessed my life. I went back to read it again and I thought, oh my goodness, it's so much good information in this book. I'm reading right now about having bitterness and unforgiveness and things in your heart that will cause you to live a, a, a out of it and you don't even understand why. And it's because you allowed those seeds to rest there and then all of a sudden you get a grown plant from it. Issues of the heart. I talk about the importance of guarding your heart. I also talk about renewing your mind in this book, Bishop. Mm -hmm. How important it is for us to renew our mind to the Word of God and get in right information and right knowledge so that we can live the abundant life. You do not want to have a diseased heart. You do no, not you want do not. your heart to be wrong toward people and toward other Christians and toward the people of God. But if you don't guard your heart with all diligence, then you will begin to live out of things that you may not even understand why things are happening. I'm talking here about the significance of knowing who you are and knowing your purpose and how your heart affects everything, everything. around you, wow. including your mind. Your heart affects everything around you, whatever kind of seeds that you're allowed to come in. That is what you will live out of, and God wants you to have a right heart, a good heart, a heart full of love, full of peace and joy and love and all those great things. And those seeds produces a harvest. So, so what kind of harvest? What's in you going to come out of you. That's right. Absolutely. What's in you is going to come out. So we want to make sure that we're living the right, allowing the right seeds to come in so that we can reap the right kind of harvest in our lives. Get rid of some of that stuff. If you see right now that you've got some wrong seeds and you've got a far harvest that you don't like, check your heart out. Just say, hey, let me see what's in here. Do I have, do I have any hidden uh, uh, anger, any hidden bitterness, any hidden unforgiveness? Well, do I have any jealousy or envy or strife and things of that nature in my heart that I have allowed to take root? And then if so, then that's a work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be happy to go to work on you and begin to give you a heart checkup. Yes, give you a hard checkup, a regular checkup. You have to have a regular checkup to identify those things. Bishop, this is a great topic. You and it I is. are coming back next week yes. to talk about this same thing again because we are running out of time. But we want you to know to guard your heart, for out of it are the issues of life. We'll see you the next time right here on Faith to Believe. God Amen. bless you. Amen.